When Wayland yutani loses contact with Hadley's Hope, the colony on LV-426, Ripley joins the team of Colonial Marines to investigate the situation. Before encountering the alien infestation themselves, they find evidence of a brutal and violent last stand between the inhabitants of the colony and the xenomorph creatures. So what exactly happened in these days before the dropship landed? In the special edition of Aliens, we see the origins of the infestation, with the Jordan family exploring the same derelict ship that was seen by the crew of the Nostromo 57 years earlier. We would later learn that these coordinates were sent to the colony to investigate at the explicit direction of Burke after learning the likely location of the ship during Ripley's briefing. Russ Jordan, along with his wife Anne, venture off into the derelict ship while leaving their children, Timmy and Rebecca, otherwise known as Newt, to wait inside their tractor until they return. After an undetermined period of time, Anne returns in a panic, screaming for help over the radio, and it's revealed that Russ has been attacked by a facehugger, and would of course soon be giving birth to the first of many aliens that would infest the colony. While this is all we see in the film version, the comic book Newt's Tale, which occurs between the events of Aliens and Alien 3, depicting Newt in cryosleep, having nightmares that relive her experiences, further elaborates on the transpiring events that would lead to the colony-wide attack that would leave Newt as the lone survivor. After 24 hours, the facehugger, after having implanted its embryo, detached from Russ's face and died. Due to these mysterious circumstances, and with none of the scientists and medical officers in the colony being able to explain what the creature is, and whether or not it infected Russ in any way, he was confined to medical quarantine. During this time, other colonists were sent to investigate the site to gather more information about what exactly was found, and more came back suffering the same fate as Russ, also with facehuggers attached to them. The first of Hadley's Hope's xenomorphs had burst from Russ's chest shortly thereafter, naturally causing panic and confusion among the colonists. Infestation grew rapidly amidst the colony. An armed party was sent to the newly developed alien hive, hoping to wipe out the alien creatures. The remaining residents banded together in the sublevel storage area, believing that their best chance at survival was to secure a smaller area and hold out until help arrived. Despite Burke claiming contact had been lost with the colony, this is apparently not so, as the colonists were in communications with the company and were advised that Marines would be coming to rescue them. Communications with the team sent to the Hive were quickly cut off, as their weaponry was no match against the aliens. With a swarm of xenomorphs now anticipated to make its way to the sublevel storage area, the survivors hastily set up barricades to secure the area and hold off the impending threat, with armed guards taking watch over the corridors in front of the barricades. Tension arose within the group, hearing gunfire and panic outside the barricade, and in an attempt to help the doomed souls outside, the barricade was opened, compromising the security of their hiding location and letting in the horde of xenomorphs. With little firearms left available within the group, the remaining survivors are swiftly killed or captured, including Newt's mother, who is killed by a xenomorph, and her brother, who, in an attempt to save her, grabs a pistol, shoots an alien, and is drenched with the acidic blood which spurts out from the creature's dead body. Newt is able to escape through an air duct, evading detection from the aliens, which goes on over a period of days and days until finally the group of marines arrive, along with Ripley. It's clear that the colony on Hadley's Hope didn't know the severe and hostile nature of the creature they're dealing with and were poorly prepared for the outbreak that would ensue. Not that the team of Marines fared much better later on. Reasonably, we can put the majority of the blame for this disaster on Burke, who also doesn't seem to grasp the danger of the Xenomorphs himself and, as Ripley points out, is solely responsible for the loss of lives on the colony. This begs the question, did Burke send the orders to investigate the coordinates of the derelict at his own discretion, perhaps in a foolish and ambitious move to rise up within the company and get some lucrative monetary compensation for his findings? Or was this order delegated by a higher authority that we simply don't see or hear of? Comment below and let me know your thoughts on this. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more videos like this. And if there's an Alien Universe topic you'd like to see explored on this channel, please don't hesitate to comment below. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.